So another reaction that alcohols do is called oxidation. Now, you probably talked about oxidation and reduction in your previous general chemistry class, and which is really an inorganic chemistry class. And in inorganic chemistry, we talk about oxidation and reduction in terms of electrons and whether you're losing or gaining electrons. So you may have heard the, the phrase oil rig, O-I-L, oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons. In organic chemistry, um, that idea is the same, but identifying it by the loss or gain of electrons is difficult. And so we're describing the same process with the words oxidation and reduction, but we recognize it differently. So an organic oxidation is going to increase the number of carbon-oxygen bonds, or it will decrease the number of carbon-hydrogen bonds. So you can kind of think of carbon, I'm sorry, oxygen and hydrogen as being opposites of each other. Oxidation increases the oxygen. Now, sometimes that means that you're gaining an actual oxygen atom, or it may mean that you're gaining a carbon-oxygen bond. The opposite of gaining oxygen is losing hydrogen. So if you lose a hydrogen bond, that's also oxidation. Reduction is the opposite of oxidation. So it's decreasing or reducing the number of ox oxygen-carbon bonds or increasing the number of carbon-hydrogen bonds. Any questions? Personally, I think the organic chemistry definition or way of thinking about it is easier to understand. Oxidation is getting oxygen, right? Reduction is reducing the amount of oxygen or reducing the number of carbon-oxygen bonds. So primary and secondary alcohols can be oxidized using mild oxidizing agents. Um, examples of these are, what is that, um, potassium permanganate, potassium dichromate, and chromic acid. When an alcohol is oxidized, two hydrogen atoms are removed, and they're going to combine with oxygen to form water as one of the products. Uh, you may have noticed organic chemists don't care so much about balanced chemical equations. We tend to just look at the things we're interested in. So here's the overall idea. Here's an alcohol. An alcohol has a carbon with an oxygen-hydrogen, a hydroxyl group on it. When it is oxidized, we remove two hydrogens. So we remember, oxidation is gaining carbon-oxygen carbon bonds or losing carbon-hydrogen bonds. So when we take these two hydrogens off, we've lost two, I'm sorry, that one doesn't really count, does it? We've lost this carbon-hydrogen bond. That's not a carbon-hydrogen bond. We've lost this one. And when those are removed, we gain a double bond between the oxygen and carbon. So there was a single bond here, and now there's a double bond. So we've lost a carbon-hydrogen bond, and we've gained a carbon-oxygen bond. So this is oxidation. And what you end up with is this uh, compound containing a carbon-oxygen double bond. And we'll, we'll learn more about what those compounds are. I think it's in the next chapter. This chapter is dealing with compounds that contain carbon-oxygen single bonds. So primary and secondary alcohols We'll do this. Oh, I guess I should back up and say a couple more things about this. So we're, we're removing the oxygen from the hydro... Yeah, it's just... I don't think the red vines helped. Um, we're removing a hydrogen from the hydroxyl group, the alcohol functional group. The other hydrogen is on the carbon that the hydroxyl group is on. And so that's why only primary and secondary alcohols can do this because a tertiary alcohol has no hydrogen on that carbon. So if we get a primary alcohol with a mild oxidizing agent, we will get an aldehyde. That's the name of that compound with the carbon-oxygen double bond. Um, and those can also be oxidized further. We'll talk about these sorts of reactions later. But when you oxidize a primary alcohol, you're generally going to end up with a carboxylic acid. 
When you oxidize a secondary alcohol, you're going to end up with a ketone. So you're going to get different products depending on whether it's a primary or a secondary alcohol. Tertiary alcohol does not undergo oxidation. So let's look at this. So we've got a tertiary alcohol here. Maybe just a real simple one. In order for this to be oxidized, we're going to remove this hydrogen and a hydrogen on that carbon. That carbon doesn't have a hydrogen, so it can't be oxidized, so nothing happens. So primary and secondary alcohols can be oxidized, tertiary alcohols not so much. So here are our generic equations. Here's showing the primary alcohol. Remember, a primary alcohol, we're looking at the carbon that has a hydroxyl group, and it has one alkyl group on it. So this is a primary alcohol. So we're going to take this hydrogen and one of these hydrogens that's on this carbon. Which one we take doesn't matter. And then we get this guy. This guy is um, an aldehyde, and he can be oxidized further. We're not going to worry about that right now. Secondary alcohol. It has one hydrogen here, so we take this hydrogen and the hydrogen from the hydroxyl group, form a double bond with the oxygen, and then we end up with this guy. And those guys are called ketones, but we don't officially know that yet. Tertiary alcohol, nothing happens. No hydrogen on that carbon. So let's practice predicting products in alcohol oxidation reactions. We're supposed to draw the structural formulas for the products formed by the oxidation of the following alcohols. If no reaction occurs, write no reaction. So we're start we're we're really adding to the number of reactions that we're learning. And so what's really important is to, to learn them as general patterns. And then all this other stuff, whatever that is, we can just ignore that. We're just looking at the functional group part. And so we learn this type of reaction, and then we can apply it to all kinds of different things. So an oxidization, oxidation, sorry, oxidation of an alcohol is going to remove the hydrogen from the hydroxyl group and a hydrogen from the carbon that that hydroxyl group is on. In place of those bonds, because the oxygen still needs two bonds, the carbon still needs four bonds, we're going to have a double bond there. And so we can write that like this. This part over here is just along for the ride. Here now we have one hydrogen and we're going to have a double bond with the oxygen. There are lots of different ways you could draw that. I'm just drawing it similar to the one that was given to us. Any questions? That making sense? So let's look at B. We have to take off this hydrogen from the hydroxyl group and a hydrogen from this carbon. Can't do it. That one's easy. And no reaction. It won't happen because there's not a hydrogen there to remove. Let's do another one. This guy. Oxidation of an alcohol. Here's the hydroxyl functional group. We're going to lose this hydrogen and the hydrogen on the carbon that the oxygen is attached to. So what's happening is we're, you know, we've got the carbon and the oxygen, these are bonded together and we're taking a hydrogen off from each side and replacing it with a double bond. So we're removing we're removing this guy and this guy and replacing them with a double bond. What about D? 
Well, D, this is more of a line angle drawing, isn't it? We're going to remove the H and the hydroxyl group. Is there a, car is there a hydrogen on that carbon? There is. If we look at it, here's the carbon. It's bonded one, two, three times that are shown. There's got to be a fourth bond. So there is a hydrogen on that carbon, and that's what's going to be removed, replacing it with a double bond. That's kind of messy. Any questions? There's another reaction of al alcohols, halogenation. So when we have halogenation, we have a halogen atom being substituted for the hydroxyl group. So what's going on here, here's our hydroxyl group. That's going to come off, and a hydro I'm sorry, a halogen is going to come in its place. So it's a substitution reaction. They're swapping places. I don't like how these reactions are drawn, but I didn't want to bother with doing it myself. So, um, so here we have, this is ethanol, right? So ethanol can react with phosphorus trichloride. And it's this mostly happens just with chlorine and bromine, not with fluorine. So you've got phosphorus trichloride, or you could have phosphorus tribromide, and then you'd end up with a bromine in there. And that's going to take the OH off and put a chlorine in there. And then you're going to end up with ethyl chloride or chloroethane, depending on how you want to name it. So what we end up with is an alkyl hal halide. The same sort of thing we ended up with when we did hydrohalogenation of an alkene, except now we're only going to get one product. And so this is a better uh, way to make alkyl halides because you can control what product you make instead of having to deal with a mixture. So this summarizes the reactions of alcohols. Um, and if I were studying this for a test, I would be paying attention to these summary tables because they kind of give you an overview. It's easy to get lost in the individual pages of the textbook. So what can alcohols do? Well, they can burn, combustion. And you did some combustion reactions in lab today and then tried to write the equations for them. So combustion, we've got oxygen as the other reactant. You get heat and light being produced, and the products are always carbon dioxide and water. Another reaction is halogenation. The halogen comes in the form of phosphorus trichloride or phosphorus tribromide, and you end up with an alkyl halide. Here, some heat is required. Oxidation, you're going to have um, an oxidizing agent. Potassium permanganate is um, a common one. The primary alcohols will be oxidized to aldehydes, and then they'll be <coughs> oxidized further. The secondary alcohols will be oxidized to ketones. And at this point, you should be able to do like we did just now with the examples of writing the products that form, but I don't expect you to name them, right, because we haven't studied those kinds of compounds yet. And tertiary alcohols don't react. Dehydration, we talked about that on Monday. So we've got sulfuric acid. And at the higher temperature, we get intramolecular, so within one molecule, and that gives us an alkene. If we lower the temperature, we get intermolecular dehydration, and we end up with an ether. So the two alcohols, two alcohol molecules join together. Preparation of alcohols, um, the one we learned is alkene hydration. So you've got a carbon-carbon double bond, and you add water across it, and you end up with an alcohol.
So I'm just going to throw these in here because it's a short, short little section. You can make polymeric alcohols. Remember, a polymer is um, a series of monomers joined together in one long molecule. You can make polymers from alcohols. And these are going to have structures that are similar to those of substituted polyethylenes. So it may look like this, where we've got this hydroxyl group in here. This is polyvinyl alcohol, and this is a really useful polymer. Um, polyvinyl alcohol is water soluble, and so that may not be helpful, but it is very resistant to hydrocarbon solvents, and you can make it insoluble in water by doing some cross linking. So that's just a little blurb about polymeric alcohols.